Okay, hello, welcome to the second video of my Eugene tutorial series. So in the last video we created this panorama and um, in this video I'm going to show you how to improve on that. So we saw in the last video, um, sorry, uh, we saw in the last video that there were some focus issues going on, especially in this part where the forest is all blurred versus here where it's really um, sharp and also the rocks here are kind of blurred uh, when compared to the other ones. So um, let's try if we can fix that. Um, I think it's gonna be a bit hard because uh, the focal distance is so different. So this is like focus infinity about and the, the mountain is really in the front so it's uh, nearer. But maybe we can fix something about that. Let's try that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I create a new file in Eugen and I switch the in interface to the export mode. So now I right click and click add individual images and I add the new JPEGs, the same, the very same JPEGs. So um, basically you're doing the same steps now as the assistant does, but you're doing them manually. So you say, um, first of all, you need control points. So as I said uh, earlier, Eugene checks um, if it finds visually similar points um, and then tries to align the points in the images. So what it's now doing, it's analyzing the images and uh, looks for similar, visually similar points. And you can see it added 213 control points. So if we look in the control points tab here, we can select the left and the right image and we can now see all the control points. So uh, Eugene detected, okay, um, this point number zero on the right image is exactly the same as the point number zero here. And nine is exactly the same as nine here and so on. Um, so as of now, you see that bar here is all red and that means the points are not aligned. So in order to align the points, let's do the optimization and you can choose here several modes. So yeah, the first of all is the positions. Uh, so you can imagine this thing as kind of a sphere from the inside. So you can imagine this um, as looking at the sphere from the inside. So on the left, you can see actually the sphere. Uh, and the whole projection stuff is basically projecting the spherical, um, how, how to call it, that the surface of the sphere will be projected onto a flat surface. So it's basically the same as with uh, cart uh, cartography. So if you're mapping the earth surface onto a map um, and you're basically having the same issues. So um, I won't go into detail about that here, but um, there are projections which will keep the angles, which will keep the areas, which will keep straight lines straight and so on. And it's basically a choose two of three. So, um, about these settings, whoop, wrong, here. So you can optimize several things. So you can optimize positions, positions and view, uh, barrel distortion and um, basically all these things. So usually I use position, view and barrel, but it depends. So it's really more or less a trial and error. And translation is only needed uh, Translation basically means the camera was moving. So for example, when I was on the ship and taking the panorama, I also chose translation because the camera was moving. Then I press calculate. And now it says, okay, the control point distance we found is 1.45 and um, the maximum is 7.29. Um, that's actually not too bad, but let's try another one. Let's try the positions first. Okay, you can see the average control point distance is now 3.4 and the maximum is nine, so it's worse. Um, let's check positions view. 
Hmm. No, not really. So position view and barrel really resulted in the best results. So let's apply the changes. Now we can see if we go into the preview pre preview mode, we can already see okay the image is aligned. It kind of makes sense. If we look at the control points, we see okay most of them are aligned well. Uh, here we have some yellow ones here as well. So a good way is to or what I do then if I want to improve the quality of my panorama is I look at the images manually, I look at the control points manually and I have a look at okay which control points um, really have issues and number four here number four here you can you can sort by the distance here and then you can see number four is the one with the um, highest deviation so now I go to 100% and well as you can see the image here on the right is pretty much distorted from being so far out of the field of view so if you look here it's basically in the bottom um, so i what i would do now is i just remove the control point four actually the bottom i don't care because the right image will not be used in the bottom the quality is so poor so uh, yeah the number three it's kind of fair but also again mm, if we zoom into 100 percent even as a human you cannot really say is this the correct position so how should the computer be able to do that let's remove that as well just to be sure number two is the next one it actually looks quite okay and um, what you have to keep in mind so let's quickly check the other photos so this one is two seems to be right so what you have to keep in mind is if you have one bad control point then um, this also of course affects the other control points because uh, Eugene then tries to optimize as well for this control point and so the quality of the optimization for the other ones will die or will, will go worse now this is a corner case, but I think he's right. So basically that means if you remove the worst control points, the other ones will get better as well. So now we compared the first image to all the others. Now let's do that with the second image. Uh, as you can see, there is one with four and this one is on a cloud. Um, so usually control points on clouds are not really good except if there's really structure on the cloud because you cannot tell if this really is the same point yeah and oftentimes clouds uh, move so fast or change so fast that you cannot really tell is it is it really the same spot okay as we can see here the left one is is uh, kind of blurry and the reason for that is i guess the left one yeah it's kind of it's actually it's actually blurry all the way right i mean it kind of has the focus on the front and the in the in the front but actually it's it's blurry all the way so this is actually a nice example this is what is this image number one okay great so um we just realized image number one is blurry it's not good so in the in the panorama preview which we can open here we can just say don't use image number one we can act activate the identifier here and um, we see the one is in green and we can just disable it here so now we don't have to care anymore about the one it will be ignored um, because it's blurry so Let's compare the other ones. 285. Hmm. Should we keep it? Let's keep it for now. Oh boy. 672. Let's zoom out here a bit. Hmm. You know what? I think I'll um, just optimize once more. Okay, now the, the maximum is down to 662. Let's check that again. 
Yes, indeed. It's still problematic. So let's have a look. It, it seems to be the same thing, but... The problem, um, the problem, hmm, what's the problem here actually? I think the problem is that it's so far on the right um, in the in the first image. So let's just remove them. This one, this one, yeah, remove them as well. You can see the score already increases. Um, And here we go, the four. Whoa, okay. Uh, as you can see here, the, the the control points on the left are kind of in a straight line, and on the right there, there uh, in the, the line gets diagonal. So what my guess would be is that the cloud was moving actually, and it was moving so fast that the control points, um, or, no, it was moving actually. And so I'm going to remove the control points on the cloud. This one is as well on the cloud. and But you can see this is number two and number four. Uh, so these images are not exactly adjacent to each other. So there's one image in between, which is number three, which overlaps both of them. And so it's not too important to have many control points here. So I think this is fine. Um, now let's head back to the optimization again, optimize it. And as you can see, we are down to an average below one. So um, let's head over to the preview. So we're basically done here with the, um, with the control points. Then what else is important is the photometric. Mm, this is basically the exposure, so the exposures are aligned of all the images. And now we go to the assistant um, or to the preview, and what we're doing now again is center fit straighten. Mm, I think it works fine most of the time. And then we can do an auto crop. And I don't want to have too much on the left. I would like to go up here a bit. Um, and uh, let's, okay, I don't care about the corners, about the black corners. Uh, let's do it that way. So then we can close to preview and go to the stitcher. And what we do here is we calculate the optimal size. Uh, this is important because otherwise you will get a very low resolution. Uh, we want the exposure corrected low dynamic range. Um, here you can also select, for example, uh, exposure fused panoramas, which in my opinion don't work that well. Uh, and you can also say, okay, I want the, the images, the remapped images um, to be exported separately. So everything's set and I can press stitch. Yes, we save it. Uh, basically, we use the standard name for the simple tutorial. So let's say underscore expert. And here as well, underscore expert. And that's something I like to do a lot. And the batch processor is now running. It's working, uh, remapping the images. Since this is a small panorama, it really works works quite fast. Um, I sometimes do panoramas with 10 or even more images. That takes longer than, but here it goes quite fast. So it's done. So let's have a look. Um, this, is it this? This one it is. So we see here we have the corners where we chose uh, here the field of view was important to me. And as you can see, yeah, as you can see, it, it improved quite a lot. So uh, let's put them to the, the blue. sorry. Uh, let's put the two next to each other. 
<clears throat> this is the one I want. Here we go. And if we look especially at this region, um, then it's fine, Windows. It's fine. It's okay. So kind of got to get the, the same uh, region here. But as you can see, the I think the... Ah, here we go. So as you can see on the left, there is this blurry image, and this probably comes from the image number one, which we ignored. And on the right hand side, it's all sharp uh, and really nice. So that's why I usually like to, to do the panoramas in expert mode. It pays off to, to review them. And as you can see, I cannot see any big glitches and stitching. Um, also the clouds look uh, really nice. Uh, as you can, as you saw during the stitching, they were fast moving. I mean, it's in the simple panorama, it's as well, but um, yeah. So this was the expert mode interface and how to use the expert mode for stitching. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope you can use it in your panorama projects and see you next time. Goodbye.